the first wave of Arizona transfers has hit Washington. You are Locked On Huskies, your daily podcast on the Washington Huskies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back into another Monday edition of the Lockdown Huskies podcast. I'm Roman Tomashoff. That's Lars Hansen. He writes for Inside the Huskies of Fan Nation Sports Illustrated. I'm the site editor over with Huskies Wire, and you can check out all of our written work on our respective sites. Thank you for making this your first watch or first listen of the day. And if you're new, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell button down below so you never miss one of our videos when we upload something new because Lars... We've got a whole lot of breaking news to discuss on this Monday. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. I know people have seen, you know, it trickle in over the weekend. We waited as long as we possibly could to make sure this was recorded because right as we hit record, Adam Muhammad became the fourth former Arizona Wildcat to announce his commitment to the Washington Huskies. So we're going to go through this just player by player because we got Jonah Coleman, Damon Williams, Jordan Shaw, and now Adam Muhammad. So let's just go in order and let's start with Jonah Coleman because he was one of the top five graded running backs by pro football focus this season. And him and Cameron Davis are going to make just a nasty two headed monster in Washington's backfield. Yeah. And see like, and that's the thing though, which is good. It's good that, you still have Cam Davis coming back, right? Or at least again right. to this point, he hasn't been he, he hasn't put his name on the portal. We we thought Landon has had Landon has its injury might kind of delay his potential portal enrollment, but you know, still it's almost like, well, if you're gonna go, you're gonna go in the portal. Might as well at least put your name in. Now you can still stay at school technically and at least finish out the semester, but just kind of make it clear, hey, I want to explore my options. So I'm not right. guaranteed to be here by the time spring ball comes around. But with Cam Davis, again, that's another 10 plus yard, 10 touchdown plus guy two years ago. At least a year ago now, will be two years ago by the time they this team hits the field this fall, and that's the key, right? Because we, we saw with Dylan Johnson this past season, you can have one really good back, and Jonah Coleman could be the back, could be still be the lead sure. back, but having both of them together, I think, is the key because Jonah Coleman showed what he can do and beat out two seniors, DJ uh, Williams and uh, Michael Wiley, I believe, and. Uh, the key with that is he came in as a three star, kind of under the radar. I, I, you know, not a not a high three star, but kind of a mid to mid to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mid to upper tier three star. And Scotty Graham developed him quickly into an all around star back. That is and pretty. Just, and then go ahead. That's, that's no, that, that, no, that's great because that's exactly what I was going to go. I was going to say shout out to Scotty Graham, who has just really shown that he can be a fantastic running backs coach. Did a really great job with him getting him up here, and then Muhammad, who we'll get into a, in a, a little bit because I I really I'm glad you did that because I really wanted to highlight Demond Williams who is the next guy to commit. And Lars, you and I had a really fun conversation on our Friday show. So if you missed that, make sure you go listen to that where we kind of talked about now that no Fafita and Tyro McMillan have announced that they're staying at Arizona, which also happened over the weekend that, uh, Demon will, there's a, a real chance that there's a, uh, a quarterback battle between Demon Williams and Demarcus Davis for the top spot in 2024. And one thing that we're, I know you and I are both really high on Marmar, but we look at Demon Williams that dude's electric, man. I really, really like his film. The more I watch, the more I'm just kind of like, you know what? If you can get this dude a real offensive line, I I wouldn't necessarily have a huge issue throwing him into the fire as a true freshman. Where you look at his arm strength, you look at his mobility, you just look at everything that he does on the football field, and you put it behind a really good quarterbacks coach, Jimmy Doherty, and just a fantastic offense that, you know, no feet of thrived in as a redshirt freshman. If you put all those things together, there is a real chance that we can see Demond Williams as the starting quarterback as a true freshman and do really well. Where, you know, the last time a true freshman started for Washington didn't necessarily go super well with Sam Heward in the Apple Cup in 2021. But, you know, the last time a true freshman started for an entire season at Washington, that was 2015, Jake Browning. So, you know, there, there, there's something to be desired there. There's something to be said where, you know, yeah, we can build around this guy and maybe he can take us places where we saw that happen under Jake Browning. But, you know, long way to go before we get there. Well, I think it's interesting you mentioned Jake Browning because there is – the 2024 version of Jake Browning and Will Rogers. Right. And, and so I think the fact that now he is, he did put his name back in the portal and hasn't really publicly withdrawn it, 
but he has been at the team meeting. He has, I believe, at least been around the program or at least kind of been in communication with the coaches and is at least to some degree interested in potentially staying in Washington, right? So I think yeah. if you that's also the key, right? Because you could still have Demond Williams beat out Will Rogers or let's say Will starts the first half of the season and then kind of Demond takes over if you know either Will is struggling or gets hurt or you know almost like what Noah Fafita did with Jane Delore, right? Where sure. Delore misses a couple of games, Fafita gets put in and it's like, whoa, this guy's this guy's cooking. And you know, and and to to be fair to Will Rogers, part of his decision you would think to transfer and not just go to the NFL was, Hey, maybe I don't necessarily have a future in the NFL. I'll let Jake Browning, right? Where he's, where he was a, was he? A, Whoa. I mean, hey, he cooked this year, man. No, 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 but, but, but Jake was an undrafted free agent. Yes, that's, great. That, yeah. that, that's, that's what I'm saying. So Will Rogers might follow in that, but again, right. what doesn't prevent you from having a career. That wasn't a shot at Jake, believe me. No, I know, I know. But, but, but to be clear, it's like, if, if he's not a, you know, the Michael Penix or the, you know, Hey, this guy is just trying to build up his draft stock. I mean, he could in theory, right. But you're one of the top three all-time passers in college football in terms of the yards and production. Wouldn't you go now, you know, even though you had a short season at Mississippi State, wouldn't you just kind of, you know, okay, you don't, Mike Leach, obviously you can't go back to your former coach. So like, unfortunately, you know, rest in peace, but like, so, so there's, Will's kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. One would think though, Jed Fish's NFL background and maybe his NFL ties get him into the NFL some way, shape or form where, okay, plays at Washington, goes as an undrafted free agent and then goes into coaching, right? Kind of what Jed, you know, take a similar route like that. So. I think there's reasons why Will Rogers could stay, but you know, again, that would also kind of make it easier for Demon Williams to still be able to come in and compete without question, and you know, make right. it like, hey, it's either you or this, this up and coming high four star, or a you know, one of the all time great passers in college football. And so, whichever one wins the job, you're going to go with it. But it's good to have both. Is my point, right? And so let's 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 move on to because we got two more guys to get through in in this one, and the first one is. Jordan Shaw. So I'll take Jordan Shaw. And then I know, you know, you've, you've been very vocal about adding extra depth to the running back room. So I'll, I'll hand Adam Muhammad over to you with Jordan Shaw. I'm really intrigued by his potential here. And we're going to get into, you know, some of the other guys being efficient surprise sock and Takario Davis in the next segment, but I'm really intrigued by his potential. You know, he originally started his career at Indiana played there for his first season and, you know, played in four games to retain his, his uh, red shirt. And then, you know, he, he entered the transfer portal and I just, I really like his potential. I think that's the, the biggest thing that I want to get to here is he played, he played well over four games, but I just think that he has like such a high ceiling that what really intrigues me about this move is the addition of depth and youth because he retained his red shirt. So now you have four guys that I'm looking at when you have Shaw, Curly Reed, Caleb Presley, and Leroy Bryant, who all have four years of eligibility remaining. And if you can keep that group together, if you can make sure like that, Hey, yeah, you know, maybe we're going to keep you guys all to develop for one more year. And then 2025 is going to be a big year for you guys to all go really quickly. Let's, let's do that. And you know, we're, we're going to try to find a way to rebuild DBU, which is what Washington was for, you know, for the longest time over the 2010s. So I think that, you know, it's, it's not saying that these are Trent McDuffie that he's Sidney Jones, but I think that, there's a lot of potential, a lot of upside with this group, and I really like this move. Yeah, exactly, and I think that's kind of the key that you mentioned is it's also built for stability where, you know, again, we love Jabbar Muhammad, but having him only for one year, again, he, you know, if you're going to bring in a mercenary and get you to a college football national championship, I mean, he did his job. So did Dylan Johnson, right? right? So the mercenaries did their job, but you don't want to live off of mercenaries, right? So you want to have guys sure. that come in and build up that culture, and I think that'll be the key for those young guys because otherwise you really have Eliza Jackson and Daddy Dixon Right, at least right now, as your two veterans coming back, which, which they're fine, but you would think that most of those freshmen are getting the playing time, and you were you want that kind of seniority, upper class leadership, to also still exist, so those guys can be brought up and not just get thrown into the fire and sink or swim. However, I think they're going to swim because of John Richardson. But moving on to the other one, speaking of 2015 and the early success of those days, Adam Muhammad, when you just look at his production, reminds me a lot of Miles Gaskin, just you know, oh, okay. a guy that. A guy that fi- and my, what I mean by that is the guy that isn't necessarily the biggest guy, right? He's six foot two eighty, two eighty five. So he's a little bit bigger than Gaskin, but not not terribly. I mean, he's 285, not eighty five, two oh five. Oh no, no one eighty five. Sorry, one eighty. Well, okay, one eighty five. Sorry, sorry. I was, like, I, was like, I was like, when you said it, you said oh five, I was like, wait, what? Did I say two? I said yeah, one eighty five. Sorry, 
six foot one eighty five, and so he's obviously not terribly small, but he's also not terribly big either. So I think Adam Muhammad is a guy that obviously they didn't sign a previous running back in the twenty twenty four recruiting class. So this now fills that void. You would think with uh, Tybo Rogers entering the portal, you know, you want to make sure you have some stability and and you know years built up. Aside from bringing in Jonah Coleman and you have Cam Davis, so you're good. You're set next year. But Adam, Adam Muhammad is a guy to me where he's going to find a way to play more than four games as a freshman, almost like Tybo Rogers did. But he's going to have more production than Tybo just because when you look at his numbers, I mean, that that's all he does is produce yards and touchdowns. Right. So those are the four guys that have committed so far as we're recording the show. Let's get into some of the guys who haven't yet, but might. Right after a quick message from our fans, our friends over at FanDuel, because, hey, the Lions won again. You know, that 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 future bet that I, that I put out there keeps cooking. Doesn't matter how they do it. They're still winning. You love to see it. And the NFL regular season is wrapping up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy to use. There's so many different ways to bet, like live same game parlays. You can find bets in the new Explore tab. You can make a parlay in the Parlay Hub. The best way to find popular parlays and more is so visit FanDuel.com. Com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel is an official partner of the NFL. So Lars, let's talk about some of the guys where it seems like we're, you and I are both hearing good things when it comes to the, behind the scenes. And I think the most important person to talk about that I think we need to get it right off the jump is uh retro freshman Ray Polito where he's really talented. I, I really like what he's done on a film so far. And Washington right now has 10 scholarship offensive linemen, which is not enough. Where you don't want this offensive line to look like Colorado's did this past season. So you have to find a way to bring in as many, not, not just as many bodies as possible, but as many talented bodies to protect whoever it might be quarterback. As we just talked about in the first segment, it could be a true freshman in Demon Williams or Demarcius Davis. So when we look at that, you want to make sure that that guy is protected. And Raymond Polito is a really talented offensive lineman who I think would slide in at probably right guard uh, just from, you know, the, the way the, the line is shaping up right now. And I just, I think that he's really promising. Yeah. Well, I mean, not only that, I mean, just to your point about Colorado to run the ball, like, like, yeah. like if you want to run it with Jonah Coleman and Cam Davis, someone's got a block for him. We saw in 2021, how well you can have plenty of talents in the running backs. If you don't have an offensive scheme or you know, offensive line that makes it work again. That's not a shot at Scott Huff. Because twenty, the offensive line turned out to be fine. I think right. the offensive line turned out to be pretty fine. It was the uh, scheme that didn't work in that situation. But yeah, um, Raymond Polito. I, I I can also see him maybe sliding over at left guard, depending on how guard member responds, and maybe if they see him at right guard. But I think again, you just want veteran bodies along the offensive line. And again, one thing we kind of want to probably caveat this whole conversation with for Washington fans. Is right now we can only Washington can only take from Alabama. Um, there's one other school in Arizona or, and San Diego yeah. State. So so there's only there's a limited number of you schools mean San Jose right, State. San Jose State. What did I say? San Diego State. My bad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hey, they got somebody from San Diego State though. I, you, your head's in the right place. I was I was gonna say I'm not far off. I mean the the poundage I was a little far off, but only by one <laughs> one number, but one very key number, and that's very very, um, very important number there. Um. Where was I going with that? But um, oh yeah, but no. So in April is when you're more likely to see more offensive linemen right. come, which is gonna. But the problem the Jed Fish is gonna run into during spring practices, which again we might have this conversation a little bit more down the line, is when do you hold spring camp? Because if you can get it, if you can hold spring camp to maybe in May, where I know it's not ideal, but that way you can bring in more bodies in that April transfer window. I, when you know when when you, when you get. Yeah, I, I know. I know it's kind of a risky proposition, but it's like I don't you, think you can. It's 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 a matter of NCAA scheduling more than it is anything else. Where I it's open in like March and April. I believe it closes in May, so you're not you're not allowed to practice over the course of that month. But your your head's in the right place there. And then it's something where you know maybe you field a bunch of walk ons for the time being. There are ways around it to to your point. But I'm I'm really interested in because there are a whole bunch of more guys that I, I know you and I want to get to. The big one who we talked about a little bit, like Takario Davis and Apicius Prysock are two fantastic players that would probably come in and start right away. Where you know you fill those guys out with and then flip in a, an Elijah Jackson or Devon Banks to round out that that top three cornerbacks group, and you're you're cooking. You you've got something there. 
where there's a lot of promise there. But one guy who I'm really curious about who did get released from his national letter of intent over the weekend, according to some of the Arizona insiders, is a four-star safety from, from up here. Um, that's Garfield High School's Rayshon Clark, where he seems like another guy who he's probably going to end up following the staff up here. Yeah, and that would be a crucial one, not just because you're getting a local kid and Jed Fish can say, hey, we're, we're actually are putting you know proof behind our claim of wanting to recruit the state of Washington. But he's a guy where I think you know the old staff kind of had the trepidations about playing at, at defensive back. I, I'm sure you've seen the clip from the Poly Bowl. I think he can play defensive back. I think he's more than just an athlete who can happen to run yeah. around and, and has some ball skills. He's a guy that I think has gotten better as a – just almost in that Michelle power role, playing the run better, just kind of coming up and playing in open space better. That's, I think, because we, we both have seen his growth as a as a ball hawking kind of player, but more so a receiver, right, where he's right. kind of been a, a more featured piece on offense. But I think getting him proper coaching with John Richardson, I think John Richardson knows he can develop him as a defensive back. So that would be a massive get out of Garfield, another four-star that you can say, hey, Jed Fish got a four-star right away. A little easier because he's – got him in Arizona, but that also kind of leads me into another one that I'm intrigued about at tight end is Dorian Thomas, a former, yes. a, a former state of Washington prospect. And that name probably won't jump off at Washington fans and think, Holy cow. But when you look at the two guys who had the most production at tight end this season, it was Jack Westover, a guy who played two games of high school football before being a walk on tight end at Washington and Devin Culp, a four-star athlete who was more of a running back out of Gonzaga prep than he was a receiver. And those two guys ended up developing ironically somewhat under Jordan Pau you know, that, you know, you know, in terms of like he, he I remember Devin was getting recruited by Pau So, so Jordan knows the state of Washington. He'll be able to develop, develop those guys. The other one is a uh, Keon Burnett. He entered the portal as well. I think, yeah. you know, Washington probably could use a couple of tight ends and maybe three, honestly, because I don't believe they signed anybody at the no Decker to Graf. Decker to Graf did Decker to Graf, yeah. Decker to Graf did sign. It does seem like he's at least sticking around because he was at the press conference. I remember seeing him, and you know, you would kind of just think a tight end. Why, why not stick around, right? Like, you know, at least give right. it a year, and and if, if you don't get any playing time, maybe figure things out later. But you know, keeping Decker will be key. But I still think you want to add two or three tight ends to that room. And Keon Keon Burnett, a former four star from Survey, you know. You know, if, if he's interested, be a good he, get. yeah, because he, he's, he's in the portal, he's not visiting this weekend. At least we haven't publicly seen that. So, likely, you're probably you're certainly going to get Thomas, but if you could get another one, that would be key. No, I, I agree with you there. And then, so that that right there in itself is a good group. But then the question is, all right, not only are you going to have to rebuild the offensive line, but the defensive line is going to be key as well. Where we've seen a whole lot of exits there so far. Uh, now. So it's we we can update this even further. Where we know that Noah Carter got released from his NLI, where he's still looking around. It seems like right now Alabama is the favorite for him to follow Kalen DeBoer and, and co down there. We saw three star defensive lineman Keona Wilhite take a visit and then eventually get offered by Michigan State this past weekend, and then the one that you know was seemed to be coming all along was Dominic Kirks, where we saw him decommit from Washington a week and a half, a week and a half ago after not signing during the early signing period and officially got offered after an official visit and decided to commit to Ohio state where that's, you know, that's really curious where, where I'm really curious when it comes to what's next, because the offensive line is key, but then the defensive line is probably next where the Washington is already going to be replacing all four starters up front. There's some talent in the room. I know you, you retweeted something about uh, Omar Khan, who I know you and I both really like, went 34-0 and as a wrestler this season down in Texas. That's really impressive, and getting a dude like that to play defensive tackle is huge. But on top of that, we, we saw one Arizona defensive lineman hit the portal, but it's like you said earlier. There needs to be more on that front before you know you can start to feel really good and just say yeah you know i like this group a lot but the depth isn't there you need to be able to add more depth where maybe it's a stop gap for now and then you hit high school recruiting hard in 2025 but lars there's there's a lot more that we want to talk about because as we continue to talk about the transfer portal we've got to talk about some of the guys who have left and announced their commitments elsewhere or are taking official visits elsewhere because you know there there, there are more than a few of those So Lars, let's let's jump into some of these other exits real fast because we can start with the biggest ones and then, you know, no offense to some of the other guys, but the two that were the most important, which were the two guys that Caleb DeBoer took with him to Alabama. 
and that's quarterback Austin Mack and center Parker Brailsford. Where, where where do you want to start with this? You want to start with Austin Mack or do you want to start with, with Brailsford? Well, I'll start with Parker because that one, I mean, you know what's crazy is DeBoer's last tweet is still Xavier's Randy Sales commitment to Washington. Burrow hasn't even checked into Twitter. He said he's been on fine bomb. He's done some of the hits. I guess maybe to his credit, he stayed off Twitter just to hit the ground running and not try and be the guy that's trying to win over Twitter. You know, you might as well win over your locker room if you're going to win over rather than win over Twitter. So shout out to him for that. By all accounts, Alabama fans aren't burning the house down yet. So, I mean, he's, he's surviving down there. But getting Parker Brailsford was kind of the one that we had been talking about where, hey, Parker's not in the portal yet. Hey, Parker's not in the portal yet. And Parker was in and the portal. And, 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 it, and it was one of those where it's like you you absolutely can't fault him, right, especially with Scott Huff going to Alabama. You know, I remember when Scott Huff came to Washington for Boise State, it was such a hard sell to get him out of Boise because he's everyone's like, oh, he's a Boise lifer. He's going to stay there forever. And now, you know, Scott Huff follows Kalen DeBoer without really any public tweet or, you know, acknowledgement saying hey like you know taking off for some way shape or there really hasn't been any reporting on it they kind of said oh yeah scott house the offensive line coach alabama it's like really? has anybody announced that well, like it's kind it of sounds like there's something going on behind the scenes between uh you know alabama's buyout and not being able to announce coaches where we we don't have like any confirmation on what it exactly is so we won't necessarily speculate on it but it seems like that's one of the big holdups where you know guys like Ryan Grubb, Scott Huff, Jamarcus Shepard haven't been able to be announced by Alabama's assistants yet because there, there's something going on behind the scenes there, which is really all we can say. And if, if it's, it's kind of a, if you know, you know, kind of thing for, for the time being. Right. I, I just kind of want to let, let that be spoken into existence because it's like, hey, how come that hasn't been really formally announced yet? Huh. And that, that, actually, that actually is why. Um, but it's, it's kind of like the elephant in the room, if you will. But getting back on point with Scott Huff going down to Alabama, it kind of almost seemed likely that Parker was going to follow because, you know, Julius Buelo is probably going to take some visits elsewhere, but hasn't been looked at by Alabama. Nate Kalepo is looking at Old Miss to follow in the Victor Kern footsteps, but he's got Parker an official Bo- visit scheduled in Miami too. We'll get there. Right. But, but, but the point being that he, there was only really one lineman that was going to go with Huff to Alabama and that was Parker. And, right. and so that was kind of where, like, it, it, once he entered the portal, it's like, yes, he could come back. And he had a good relationship with Brennan Carroll and Jed Fish. But it's Alabama. It's Scott Huff. It's Kalen DeBoer. You're going to be the starter. They Seth McLaughlin transferred to Ohio State as a two-for-one package. Yeah. As, as a two-for-one package to get Caleb Downs. Because, you know, if you get Caleb Downs, you have to take Seth McLaughlin with you, even though Seth committed first. But, you know, with that being said, tongue-in-cheek joke there. But <laughs> with that being said, you know, it, it, it definitely hurts Washington. And what even hurts it more is, the one that hasn't found the destination yet, at least publicly, is Landon Hatcher. But yeah. that was the one where, okay, well, maybe if the Hatcher brothers stick around, one of them can play center and one can play right guard, you can, they can start next to each other. And there's still potential that that could happen. I think, you know, right. maybe more so than Parker. Because once Parker entered, it was kind of like, okay, he's either entering to go to Bama, you know, almost like with a no-contact destination, or yeah. you're kind of like Jeremy Bernard. It's like, okay, if I'm doing this, I'm going to Washington. If I'm doing this, I'm going right. to Bama. Like, it's not like I'm going to go – take seven visits, see which NIL is going to give me the most. It was either Alabama or Washington. Same thing for Kalen. Right. So just kind of to that point, let's, let's kind of shift focus here to Austin Mack. And, but real, real quickly, the one thing I want to hit on there is it does sound like the hatchets might have some interest from Oklahoma and we're still really, really curious to see what happens with Landon. Obviously with his injury, you'd hope that he'd be ready for the start of the season, but you definitely want to be careful with that, especially with such, you know, a young offensive lineman. You don't want to see him have a setback or anything like that, but let's switch focus here to Austin Mack where that's a really curious one. Cause that one, not only does that hurt just Washington's quarterback room, but it's just really curious to see how he's going to fit in Alabama. We've seen Julian say, now officially announced his commitment to Ohio state and Jalen Milrow is still the incumbent starter there where, you know, we'll, we'll see how that plays out come this spring and this fall. But Austin Mack, it was somebody who you and I were both really excited about and everything we saw from him in, in the spring and even more so in the fall was yeah for a 17 year old true freshman the dude is is blowing people away and you really like his arm talent he's not like he can move he's not necessarily the most mobile guy but we've seen him move around a lot and you know be be a good athlete to get it you know get out of the pocket and still make good throws downfield so that one really hurt because especially as we look at the the depth in the quarterback room now it's it's not there, and Austin Mack would have had a, a really good shot at starting this year. And with all his upside, I remember when I tweeted out um, that he was entering the transfer portal, that he is all-American upside. And I, I still believe that to be true. 
where he's just such a talented kid and you love everything that he's able to do with his arm. And, you know, obviously you think that Kalen and Ryan Grubb and his whole staff down there is going to do a great job of developing him. But I feel that with, especially what we've seen from Jed fish with no Fafita, that he would have been able to get a similar level of, of play out of Austin. I do agree, but it's almost, it's almost like the exact same thing with Parker where it's like, okay, if you're going to go anywhere, this isn't a highest bidder thing. This is, Hey, yeah. Ryan Grubb is there. Kalen's there, you know, in, in Parker's case, Scott Huff is also so it, it's like there's no reason not to go. It's not like you know, Kalen's raiding the entire roster and taking you know Josh Cuevas and Elijah Jaquette. Right. And you know, they're not like tearing down the roster on the way out. It's like the NFL tore down the roster more than anything else, but that's because everybody decided to not go last year. So like it's like right. hey, you got you got what you wanted, right? Everyone came back and you got a national championship run out of it and a sugar bowl and all those things. So right, you know, and, and I think that the other thing to consider with Austin back leaving. And the key point in Demond Williams early enrolling. So I would imagine I don't I know he enrolled at Arizona. I would imagine he's since left Arizona. The question is, does he enroll like because I believe Washington's a couple of weeks into their winter quarter. So you know um, it might be a little too late to enroll, but he could enroll in March, right? In time for spring yes. practices and all that. So that's easy. But it does, you know, you, do you have the winter conditioning or not? I think and again, people will say, Well, what does winter conditioning matter? Ask Ron McKeefer and Kate. Ask Ron McKeefer and Kalen aboard. Like the end tell you about is a lie. Like that offseason last year built the national championship run. So uh, right. the only one you currently have in the room is Demarcius Davis, who put out a emoji tweet earlier. So you know, Sam <laughs> Peyton Waters put out the same emoji tweet well, earlier. The, so, the, 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 yeah. Yeah. So so it's again not necessarily that he's going, but again, you would think, okay, well, if he's bringing in a four star, another early enrollee, okay. Do I want to stay or do I want to give it, you know, do I want to just try and chase out? Because I mean, that the thing is like, if you're, if you're DeMarcy is, do you, is, you know, is there interest in Alabama, right? Does Alabama just Kalen Moore want you down there? Cause, but then again, do you want Austin Mack and DeMarcy Davis? Cause they're only one class apart. Right. So, so right. now, now you, that's kind of where you wonder, okay, well, you're going to transfer probably again in two or three years anyways, then you're going to want to transfer again. So might want to stick this one out to see if it works first. And it's curious because, you know, obviously they, they were ready to have that situation up here. So we'll, we'll kind of see how that works out. But then let's let's move into some of the other guys that have officially announced their exit. The first one being uh, Mish Powell, who, you know, great story, walk on, uh, ends up starting for a couple of years, plays on the outside, plays on the inside, and has decided to go play his last year at Miami, where I feel like this is a good move for him. But, you know, as, as a Seattle kid who stayed loyal, walked on to get his scholarship here at Washington, Going to Miami and getting to experience that in his final season, I think that's that's great for him. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Mario Cristobal recruited Jaden Wayne, a former state of Washington prospect. There's, I believe, a couple. There, there, there's some UW ties down there, some way, shape, yeah. or form. But I also think for me, it's kind of cool to where it's like it's not Alabama. You're not just following the old coach, and you're also not going to a Big Ten rival, right? You're not going to Michigan, or you're not going to Ohio State. You're not doing something like that, and you get legitimate Power Five football. I mean, Miami. You know, say what you will about that program. I mean, they could be good, they could be not good. So, like, I think if if first of all, if I got one more year to burn, Cam McCormick has taught us if anything, spend it at Miami. Like my, yeah, you know, <laughs> I think I, obviously Mish Powell is going to see the field, and he's probably going to be one of the key players for Miami's defense this season. But also, just for him personally, man, not, not a bad place to spend your last twelve months in college. No, I, I completely agree with you there. And then let's just review real quick before we get out of here. Some of the, the other guys that have like either taken official visits or committed elsewhere, because it, when we look at, uh, there's Asa Turner, who's taken a visit to Florida. That's another same thing, you know, decent landing spot for him in his final season would reunite with Will Harris down there. And then we talked a little bit about Nate Kaleppo who has official visits scheduled to bo both Ole Miss and Miami. And, you know, we can talk about off-season natty winner Lane Kiffin if you want, because that dude's just killing it on Twitter, killing it in the portal, doing a fantastic job of it all. Uh, and then, but he's not the only person taking a visit to Ole Miss. And I feel like, you, you know, I didn't give this one a lot of time because, you know, there's still a lot of questions since he never officially signed his NLI, and that's BJ Green, where BJ Green is scheduled to take a visit to Ole Miss. And I have two thoughts on this. The first one is it doesn't seem like Washington is still completely out of the woods or excuse me, or uh, they're out of the picture is, is, is a better way to put that where they're not out of the picture for BJ green, but 
at the same time, if Lane Kiffin is able to pull this off, it might not necessarily be the hardest sell because that would give, especially if you look at the PFF rankings, that would give Lane Kiffin the top four defensive linemen in the transfer portal. And that's that would be a really interesting defensive line to go against in the in the SEC West for uh for a couple of reasons. I just I kind of want to leave it at that. But I think that that is going to be a, a really hard thing to, you know, for Jed Fish's staff to recruit against. But at the same time, you know, if he's able to still come to Washington, that would be a massive boost for this defensive line, you know, especially at a position that is looking a little bit dire right now. Alabama definitely plays Old Miss this season, right? believe they do i don't have their their their, their schedule in front of me god you know, i count me in for that game but um but I yeah know. no i think you know obviously bj are going to be a key addition for washington if they're going to reel him back and they do have his position well i guess depending on how you view it his position coach jason uh, kafusi the defensive line coach and run game coordinator so there could be somebody recruiting and the problem is you don't have a defensive coordinator publicly so <laughs> until right. it's kind of hard to tell bj like, hey bj i know you have the sec interest and you can play against Stephen Kane and do all that in the sec and lane kiffin and all that we, we we might have again now the ace in the sleeve is if you have Pete Carroll, but like aside from that, there's not a ton that you could say as a defensive coordinator name that would convince someone to come away from the SEC. So it'll be interesting right. to see how that develops. No, you're you're absolutely right there, and I, I feel like that's a good place to wrap this up. One little a quick, just a quick thing where you know we've been talking about visits really quickly, uh, right as we're we're getting ready to hop off here. So just just a quick note on this. Four-star edge rusher Noah Carter is apparently planning to take another visit to Washington. And, you know, this is according to Jacobs League on Twitter, where that would be really interesting. Get him to another visit with the new staff. Where let's, let's just see how that one plays out. It's probably the best way to put that for now. Lars, as always, thank you so much for being here. Thank you to all the everydayers for tuning in. We really do appreciate your support. It means a whole lot to us as we pass 2,000 subscribers here on YouTube. That's really awesome. And if you're new to the channel, like what we have to say, we've got a whole lot more fun content coming for you. So make sure you subscribe wherever you get your podcast. So that's YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music. We're there. We are everywhere. We're updating the channel with new content every single day. So make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode. Make sure to like the video. Leave us a comment down below if you have any questions comments or concerns and if you're an audio listener please make sure to leave us a five-star review that's all really helpful for us as well thank you so much for tuning in and we will talk to you on tuesday